I used to work for Nintendo of America while the Wii was being created. It was actually kind of a good job, but there was one guy who worked there that nobody really knew. We didn't know what he was like or what he did on his spare time. All he had were just rumors. His name was Henry, and there were rumors about him being spread around the office about what he did, where he lived, and how he even got hired in the first place. All of which are most likely not true. To me, he was just some other guy who just wasn't really known by anyone. But sometime during the Wii's production, he started to act strange. He would show up to work late, he glared at some of the employees, and he would hide in the bathroom and wouldn't talk to anybody. I almost felt bad for him. But one Tuesday afternoon, my coworker Mike walked up to me on my break. Hey Jonathan, what do you think Henry's doing over there? I've known Mike ever since I started working at Nintendo. I would consider him to be one of my best friends. We would go bowling, grab a bite to eat, and sometimes even play a round of golf. Anyway, I looked over at Henry and he was just pacing, and I could clearly see him mumbling to himself. Looks like he's talking to himself, I replied. Seems like he's insane, Mike said jokingly as he sipped his cold can of coke. Henry continued to pace around talking to himself for about a minute, until he left the office. Me and Mike followed a safe distance away. We saw him grab a Wii, already boxed and ready to ship to retailers, and went into one of the back offices. He was sure to look around to make sure nobody was watching, and proceeded to enter the room, shutting the door behind him. So, uh, you wanna check out what he's doing? Mike asked. Maybe later. Besides, our break is almost over. I replied as Mike and I walked away. It has been a good 10 minutes since our break period ended, and I was working. I had a clear view of the office that Henry had entered, and he still hasn't come out. I started to become curious as to what he was up to in there, but I eventually decided to turn back to my computer and continue working. About 30 seconds pass and a loud scream catches the attention of everybody in the office. I whipped my head to face the door to the room that Henry was in, and all I saw was one of my coworkers standing there, shaking. Everyone got up, left their cubicles, and ran to the room. And when I managed to get a good look into the room, I almost fainted. Henry was laying on the floor, dead. His body was dark, unrecognizable, as if he were electrocuted. The result was an office-wide panic. People were screaming, calling the police. Some even vomited right there on the scene. But two days later, everybody who was present when we saw Henry's body were called down to the presentation room. I was still shaken from the whole thing and didn't really want to think about it anymore, but I just went anyway. When we got there, my boss was standing at the front of the presentation room while we got all settled. Hello everyone, my boss said. I'm sure that you are all aware of what happened two days ago, and I am just as shaken as all of you. However, we have gotten security camera footage, and I thought that it would be important for you all to see it. Please note that some of this footage is disturbing. My boss walked over to the projector and brought up the footage and pressed play. The video began with Henry entering the room with the Wii and sat down at the desk. He hooked the Wii up and set it up. 
it was normal for the most part. Other than the fact that he had a bottle of beer and was drinking it throughout the process of setting up the Wii. When Henry got the Wii fully set up, the first thing he did was go to the Me channel. And when it opened, he pressed the button to make a new Me. The Me's gender was male, and he started it from scratch. He made the Me bald, with huge eyes and a huge mouth and a small nose. Okay. That right there is the weirdest me I've ever seen in my entire life, one employee shouted. We all shushed him and continued watching. And then Henry got to naming the me. And then he named it... Etelad. Wait. Pause the video, another employee shouted. My boss paused the video as the employee took a couple seconds to analyze this me's name. That's delete spelled backwards, he yelled. And before we knew it, everybody in the room was in a heated debate on whether Henry knew what he was naming this me, or if it was just a coincidence because he was drunk. It wasn't long before my boss put a stop to it. Everybody shut the hell up, my boss yelled. He pressed the play button again, and we continued to watch in silence. Henry saved the me, and put it into the me plaza. Henry simply stared at the screen for a bit and said, Huh. I always wanted to be a me, he said as he chuckled. Immediately after he said that, my boss paused the video. We are now about to enter the part of the footage that is disturbing. If you feel you are unable to handle the disturbing nature of the following, please leave the room now, my boss explained. And thus, Many employees left the presentation room. I counted, and there were only six people left. Me, Mike, and four other co-workers. So, uh... You staying? I asked Mike. Yeah. I want to see what happened. He replied as my boss pressed play again. In the footage, Henry noticed that the monitor screen started to flicker. He looked down at the plug for the Wii, and it was about halfway into the socket. He bent down to push it back in all the way, and when he did, he got electrocuted and dropped dead. I looked behind me and all of the four co-workers in the room winced as Henry got electrocuted in the footage. I didn't even want to look at it. Mike just sat there and watched with a blank expression, as if all emotion had been sucked out of him. I looked back at the footage and got a good look at Henry. His body would sometimes jerk and flinch due to the electricity. But about six seconds later, the monitor in which Henry made that me on strangely went static. What the hell? I thought to myself. In fact, that was the only thing I could think of at that point of time. But then the monitor displayed Edeled. The me that Henry made. And he started speaking. I've always wanted to be a me. Edelet said in a distorted, low pitched voice. Have you ever wanted to be a me? Nothing happened for about 30 seconds until a loud scream sound effect was heard, and then the monitor was flashing with creepy images. I couldn't get a good look at what they were, because they were flashing so fast. But there was one image, the final image, which stayed on the monitor for about three seconds. It was of a hallway, with hospital beds lined up next to one another. There was nobody laying on the beds though, and then after that last image, the monitor cut to static, and then the footage cut to static. Everybody was silent. Nobody said a word. I... I'm, I'm very sorry you all had to see that, my boss stuttered as he turned off the projector. You may all leave now, he continued as we got up from our seats and left. But as I was leaving, I realized something. After we went back to work after seeing Henry's body two days ago, I looked back and noticed one of my co-workers, Johnny, taking the Wii, 
the Wii remotes, and the cable and box out of the room. I assumed that he was just going to format the Wii system memory, but then rumors started going around the office that Johnny just put everything back in the box, sealed it up, and put it with the others without formatting the Wii system memory. The Wii has already been sent out to retailers. I should have known that's what Johnny did. Johnny had a reputation around the office for doing some stupid things. But this would leave whoever was unlucky enough to buy the Wii to find out about Edeled. Now I have no idea what Edeled could do, but I knew that it wouldn't be good. And there was no way I could track the Wii. But I still couldn't accept the fact that whoever bought it would soon find out that it was used by a man who died while using it. Or at least find Edeled in the Me channel. So about two weeks later, I resigned. While me and Mike still remained friends, there will always be that day that in the middle of a conversation, one of us will bring up Henry, and we would sit there in silence. And I really, really hope that whoever buys that weed doesn't experience anything that Edeled might do. And if they do, then I pray that it doesn't make a lasting effect on them. Henry was a man that nobody really ever knew. Nobody spoke a word to him and never really acknowledged his existence. Was he a loner or did he have a mental disorder? Nobody knew. But all we could do was speculate. Remember, all we had were rumors.